Are you afraid of running your first code blue? Are you trying to avoid and delay running your first code as much as you can? Or maybe you're still very uncomfortable running your codes? I hear you as I was in your shoes before, but don't worry. Today I'm going to teach you how to run an efficient, smooth, and organized code. After running numerous codes as a resident's first, then as a hospitalist for the last 10 years, I can see why we get stressed out and struggle running our codes and why it takes us long time to get comfortable with that. Today, I'm going in clear steps to teach you how to overcome your fears, run your first code efficiently and impress everyone. But let's be clear. Today we're going to talk about how to run the code itself, not the ACLS protocol and different problems comes with it. I will talk about that in a separate video. Let's not waste any time and start after this short intro. And if you have not subscribed yet to our channel, please do so, so you can see our videos as soon as they are released and learn all the tricks to be a great residence and future hospitalist. Now you hear the code blue being called overhead. Code blue, code blue, code blue. And you're sitting somewhere in the hospital and you decided to go and help with that code. My first advice is whatever you do to prepare yourself running a code blue, unless you go and lead a real code, we will never get comfortable with that. So that's my first advice. Whenever you hear code blue, just go and try to lead that code. That's the only way to get better and more comfortable with that. I have 20 points that if we follow them, we guarantee that our code will be run efficiently, smoothly with no problems. Now let's pretend we are going into the patient room that they just called code blue for. Let's start with the first point. Now we're going into the room. The first question I have, who is leading the code? And if there is nobody leading the code, I say, I'll be the code leader. And this way I announce to everybody that I'm the code leader. <laughs> as soon as you announce that you are the second, uh, you are the code leader, is please go ahead and stand in front of the bed. Be loud and clear. Don't shout or scream, just be loud and clear. Once we have that, immediately I ask, do we have a pulse? I ask them to check carotid pulse. Believe it or not, people get panicky and sometimes they forget to check the pulse. So make sure they check carotid pulse. And if there is no pulse, immediately I go to the fourth point. My question is, is the patient full code? That's very important because if the patient is do not resuscitate, then we stop there. There is no point doing this code. If the patient is full code or we don't know, I immediately tell them to go to the next point, but also I send somebody to verify the code status if it's not clear. So if the patient full code, go ahead to the next step. If the patient code status is not clear, I will also go to the next step and send somebody to verify the code status. Start CPR. Immediately, if there is no pulse, I tell people there to start CPR, which is chest compression. And I follow that immediately by point number to start bagging the patient, start giving the patient's breath with the ambu bag. Please put the code board underneath the patient. The head of the bed usually is the code board. You just grab it and put it underneath the patient's. Put the defibrillator pads on the patient's chest. We quite often forget about that, especially in the, in, in, in when patients are already connected to a monitor, we tend just to look at the monitor and forget to put the pads. And it happened in the past that we needed to shock the patients and we found the patient didn't have the pads put on yet. Do we have an adequate IV access? And most of the time in the hospital, we do. Just in case we don't, then Immediately ask somebody to put an IV access and 
Don't forget about the option of interosseous um, IV uh, interosseous access. If we have the device, pretty easy and straightforward until we get an IV access. And the worst case scenario is putting medication through the endotracheal tube until we have an IV access. And now I assign roles. And it's preferred if you know the people names is to call them by names. If you don't know the names, just say, I need you and you and you to do CPR. I need you to give medications. I need you to bag the patients. And I need you to prepare medications. And I need you to be a reporter. Don't forget about the reporter, very important. And I always say to the reporter, please tell me at the two minutes mark so I can check the pulse. Just remind me on that. That will help you when to give medications and when do you check for the pulse. Now I have everybody I need to run the code. I tell everybody respectfully and politely, please anybody who has nothing to do with this code, please leave the room. Now, if you have a students or two, you want them to watch the code, that's okay. But the last thing you need is a crowded room because that will make the code inefficient and a lot of noise and interruptions. Don't forget to check blood sugar, please. Ask them to check blood sugar, whether the patient is diabetic or not. Remember that. Get a brief history about the patients. Ask who knows the patient. Get a brief history about the patient and ask for the most recent labs. It may give you a clue what went wrong with the patients. Send somebody to inform the family. Can somebody please go and talk to the family about this or inform the family about this. Don't forget to check the pulse every two minutes. And when you reach the two minutes mark, ask them to please hold compression, hold CPR, please check for a pulse and make sure it's carotid pulse. And when you have a pulse, make sure it's verified by two people if possible. Remember, do not check the pulse while CPR being performed. And also, when you check the pulse, please check the rhythm. Tell them, hey, please check for a pulse and immediately look at the monitor to check the rhythm. Never check the pulse or the rhythm while the, while the, the CPR is still being performed. And remember, when you decide to give a shock, to clearly and loudly to say, everybody clear, I'm going to deliver this shock. Remember that, please. Minimize interruptions. One of the most challenging things running a code is interruptions. Uh, interruptions can be of two types mainly, two sources. The first one, people start giving orders without going through you as the code leader, and you should not allow that. And as soon as that happens, if I'm running the code, I tell them loudly and clearly, please do not take any orders except from me. I'm the code leader, I'm leading this code. And please, if you have any suggestion, I'll be glad to listen to you, just come and tell me that. So that way you make sure that the orders only come through you and this person will not interrupt again the code process. And the second source of interruption is mainly when we, when there is another healthcare provider trying to intubate the patients. Because sometimes they need, it's hard to put the tube if there is chest compression. A lot of them, they can intubate the patient without problem. But some may say, oh, please hold compression. Let me just intubate the patients. And we should try not to interrupt CPR at all. So my response to them, I said, try to intubate while CPR is going. If not, keep bagging him and I'll give you a chance and the next pulse check. An exception to that, I may say, hey, if we don't have any IV access and we need an ET tube to put, like give medication through that, I may give them a two or three seconds to see if they can stick the ET tube quickly during that. Otherwise, do not stop CPR and only stop CPR for pulse check. While you're running the code, compliment everybody and be thankful to everybody. So please, that's, those are great compression, good job. Uh, continue that please, deeper and faster. Good job everybody. And at the end of the code, make sure you thank everybody. Hey, thanks everybody for helping me running this code. You did an awesome job. So please remember that. It's a little thing, but means a lot to the people who helped you run that code. Thank you, 
Okay, let's go to the next point. Now you got a pulse. Every time you got a pulse, please tell them, check blood pressure for me. Blood pressure means there is a pulse. Just confirm that and also helps you what to do next. Maybe the blood pressure is still very low. That means the patient is at risk of losing the pulse again. Also, if the patient, if they, if they tell you that we have a pulse, but it's very weak and thready, tell them keep your hand because the patient may lose the pulse again any moment. Now you did everything and you're thinking to call off the code to terminate this code. It's a good practice to ask if, they, if anybody has any suggestion. All right, everybody, I'm running out of idea. Do you have any suggestion? Because I'm planning to call off the code after this next cycle. So just listen to them if they have any idea and just if you feel it's the right thing to do, just get it done. Now you decided to call off the code, ask everybody if they are in agreement with you. Hey everybody, I'm gonna call off the code. Are, uh, is everybody okay with that? And if everybody okay with that, okay, I'll say call off, I'll, I'll just say stop and please check the pulse. Don't forget to check the pulse after terminating the code. Maybe the last second the pulse came back. If there is no pulse, make sure two people to verify that there is no pulse. Just announce that's the time of death at that moment. And then again, thank everybody and make sure if somebody goes and tell the patient family or hold the contact number for that patients. So these are about, I think 20, I may have missed the numbers here and there, but I think these are 20 points. I want you to practice doing it at home, at your room, assume you have a code and just try to memorize them in orders because this will prepare you well when you go and have a real code. Also remember that a lot of these tips can be done at the same time. When you're telling them to start CPR, bagging the patient, put the code board, put the defibrillator pads, all these can be done at the same time. You don't have to finish the first one to go to the next one. And most of these tips can be done in less than 30 seconds and you have to be quick uh, in initiating that CPR and get the code going. Remember that very well. Again. If you don't practice in real code blue situation, you, we will never get comfortable with it. So try to practice these points and then try to put yourself into the real wars. Just whenever you hear code blue, just try to run and lead that code. I hope you found this useful. If you find so, please share it with your colleagues. Again, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you get to see the videos as soon as they are released with all the tricks to become a great residence and great future hospitalist and hopefully soon we'll release the second video about acls protocol and running codes as well thanks for watching